Okay, well, um, good morning. I hope everybody's doing well. Um, it's absolutely great to have uh, you in attendance today and uh, we have our wonderful group together. Um, my name is Virginia Chouvet. Uh, please call me Virginia. I've had the wonderful opportunity to um, be an instructor and uh, develop programs with our wonderful team here at uh, UCI DCE. And uh, today we're going to talk about contract management and in particular various career paths. And we are very fortunate because we have a wonderful group of panelists who have gone through the program and now are um, very successful paving their own paths in their own careers. And uh, I think it'll be very uh, helpful for everybody to see what type of career paths they've taken and how they've succeeded um, on their own because contract management, as we will discuss, um, really has a lot of, uh, it's ubiquitous and there are a lot of uh, successful ways you can uh, really achieve your career goals in contract management. Um, Gina, were there any other preliminaries you wanted to go through before we uh, move forward? just put a message in the chat if you have any questions during the presentation definitely um, send it via chat or question and answer and I will get uh, Virginia or the panelists attention and, and get those answered for you um, but other than that we're I think we're good to go Virginia thank you okay great and then I think um, first can we just uh, just briefly introduce um, our three panelists and then we'll move forward with the presentation um, Let's see, uh, Jimmy, shall we start with you and then we'll go um, with the other two? Just say hi and your title and uh, then we'll move forward. Sure, hi everyone, uh, my name is Jimmy. I am the uh, contract manager for the machinery programs at uh, Northrop Grumman, uh, currently in Sunnyvale, California. Um, I've been in the role, uh, I've been in the business for about three years. I start off in, in pricing and have moved into contracts uh, and ended up in that realm um, by taking the contract management course. Um, that was very helpful in me moving to, uh, to contract. Um, prior to this, I uh, served uh, in the Peace Corps for about three years, and right after that, did a, a graduate program before coming to Northrop Grumman. Nice to meet everyone. Thank you. Um, who'd like to go next? I can, I, I can go. Please. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Raymond. Uh, I uh, work right now as a senior legal ops specialist at a tech company based in San Francisco. Previously, I worked as uh, a paralegal and uh, did a lot of like, contract drafting. And so that was kind of why I had joined uh, the contract management program, which I found very helpful uh, when I was part of the program from around 2018 to 2019. Thanks. Thank you, Raymond. And uh, Lastly, Hi, my name is Susan Landolt. I work for Epic Global, which is a large international legal solutions corporation. And I am currently the contract supervisor and transitioning to contracts manager. My current responsibilities include overseeing all of our class action and um, cyber incident contracts for North America. And um, Within that, I draft contracts, review them, ensure that we are compliant with offshore restrictions, service level agreements, um, document retention, things like that, and also oversee the commissions for new contracts. Um, as I am transitioning, I'm training somebody to take over my responsibilities, and I will be managing our team of contract analysts overseas in India. So that's an exciting oh. I'm looking forward to. That's awesome. And yeah, before that, I was actually a registered nurse for many years and got pretty burnt out on that. And I'm really happy to be behind a computer now. And the bedside. Well, thank you. And as you can see from uh, our wonderful uh, alums, uh, they have just forged phenomenal careers. And uh, they, I'm so glad that we have them here because they can really share from their rich experiences. Uh, so they'll give you wonderful uh, insights into uh, all of the great achievements they've had. Okay, Gina, can we move to the next slide? Thank you. 
I'm going to try to speak as little as possible, so because I'd rather have our panelists um, take up the bulk of their time, because they're much more interesting than I am. But so let's just start briefly with um, what contract management is. Uh, Gina, next slide, please. So usually, let me just say it this way: a contract is the crux of any business transaction. So a contract, right, is the blueprint for how the transaction is going to occur. Without the contract, you don't you don't have any money coming in, you, and you don't have a business. So, um, as Susan, um, Raymond, and Jimmy are going to share from their perspectives, the work that they do is vital, and I repeat, vital for their particular organizations because they're dealing with the blueprint of the transaction for their organization. So, with the contract management, you're talking about the entire contract life cycle from the negotiation phase all the way to your closing out uh, the contract and ensuring that everything was done. Now listed here on this slide are the typical duties that you would see. Obviously, uh, given a particular organization who's enforcing them, their industry, these may uh, be customized and a bit different, but typically this is what you see. So you can see anything from writing, analyzing, responding to proposals, negotiating the terms, managing the entire contract throughout the life cycle, identifying risks. Um, here's a big one too, advocating for and monitoring compliance. And I will tell you this, uh, as a lawyer, and I've dealt with numerous companies and I've dealt with numerous uh, enforcement bodies, there is nobody who, who is in, who's a better ally than a competent contracts manager to have in your corner, especially when you're dealing with um, enforcement issues. Like uh, the other day, I was helping out a company. They had some antitrust issues coming down. And thank God, was working with a phenomenal contracts manager who was really able to uh, look at some of the collusion and joint venture issues. So again, contracts manager is one of your top allies that you can have for protection of your company. And then uh, continually improving procedures and policies. Again, these can change whatever, uh, per whatever the organization does need. The other thing I will say before we move on to the next slide, the contracts manager is as much, has to have a lot of business acumen along with understanding the legal compliance and other risk uh, characteristics that occur with a transaction. But you can kind of see how business permeates through each of these duties. And I'll allow the panelists to further expand on that as well. Thank you, Gina. Next slide. Um, because contracts, they affect uh, every business transaction, the, a contracts manager is necessary pretty much in any industry and any sector. Uh, your usual areas where, where you see a lot of contract management uh, hiring would be in aerospace and defense. Uh, and what's interesting now with aerospace is we're increasingly seeing uh, much more emphasis on civilian satellite, uh, some space tourism. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, certainly construction, uh, increasingly life sciences, uh, tech companies, and then commercial, when we're, we're referring to commercial, we're referring to the uh, private organizations, so non-governmental contracts. And in commercial, increasingly, we're seeing that could be anything from a prime hiring a subcontractor to, to companies maybe within entertainment, esports sector, whatever the case may be. International, uh, we also are increasingly seeing a need for uh, contract managers who are adept in international uh, transactions and understanding those, in particular CISG, other areas. And emerging areas that we are seeing certainly would involve maybe a mix of what I've just discussed. Uh, there are increasingly right now for marketing companies they need contracts managers because of uh, the increase in their sector. We also see in uh, real estate. So with contract management, there are a lot of industries and sectors that you can look at. And I also want to highlight the fact that the contract manager, uh, there is a growing understanding 
of the importance of the contract manager as the organization's problem solver. And that's because, again, the contract is the crux of any business transaction. So the contract manager is in the trenches day in, day out with the contract. They know precisely when an automatic renewal clause may kick in, when a potential breach could occur, right? And again, I'm talking from my attorney perspective, one of the best allies that I can have is the contracts manager in protecting the company. Uh, Gina, the next slide. Thank you. Um, the latest information that we have with regard median salaries now, again, uh, this can fluctuate, but we've seen around 115,000 and then there are various annual uh, bonuses. They can go anywhere from five to um, 20, thousand ish. Uh, it depends obviously on the industry and the positioning that uh, you would see, but this kind of gives you a basic idea of uh, what the, the salary, uh, median salary would be. And as I said before, there's a growing prominence um, with the contract manager. So before with contract management, people really didn't know too much about it. And so you wouldn't have uh, such a such a such a desire in the market to hire contracts managers as it's growing in prominence because as companies are realizing how valuable having a contracts manager in their organization is there are um, increases in salaries and bonuses i have several friends and colleagues who are recruiters within various industries who now they are looking left and right to hire contracts managers. Um, there also is the issue of kind of the retirement phenomenon. So they need a lot more contracts managers coming in. So again, the growing prominence, the need for contracts managers and the recognition to have contract management in the organization uh, will continue to buoy uh, a higher than average uh, salary than you see in other uh, professions. Okay, thank you, Gina. Next slide. And then this briefly just tells you about NCMA. So um, our curriculum with the contract management program is based off of the SIMBOC, which is the contract management body of knowledge, uh, which is the premier uh, book that is recognized by ANSI, so American National Standards uh, Institute, as the standard for the profession of contract management. And uh, we are partnered, educationally speaking, with NCMA, so our entire curriculum is based off of uh, the nationally recognized and internationally recognized ANSI standard um, of the SIMBOC. Uh, so you will be getting the essence of what contract management is and essentially what you will be doing once you get into the workforce. And then further, what's nice about NCMA, it's a professional association. So in addition to the standards and the uh, books that they uh, develop, uh, they also have certification exams. So our uh, certification uh, program at UCI will put you in a very good position to uh, sit and pass the uh, certification examinations. I've been very fortunate that several of my students and even those who have uh, graduated, they've passed the certification exams. It's always great to get that email in my inbox. Hey, Virginia, I passed. Um, it's wonderful news. And then there are uh, networking events and other ways to get involved with NCMA. Okay, next slide, please. Thank you. And then as I mentioned uh, just briefly, the uh, SIMBOC, which is the textbook that we use in our program, also is allied with uh, the contract management standard uh, that is ingrained within our program. And uh, it also has been recently adopted by the DOD. So you really are getting uh, the solid education that you need within contract management. Okay, next slide. Okay. 
And then here we have um, our uh, offerings and contract management. So this is the certificate program. These are the six courses. Uh, I've been very fortunate to work with, uh, with Gina and uh, I mean, she's, she's phenomenal. Students just love her um, and all of the fantastic team at UCI with regard to the program. So these are the six courses that you'll be taking. Um, there are also other customized programs, uh, alternative digital credentials, corporate trainings that are intertwined with contract management. Uh, if you want further details on the customized programs, feel free to reach out to Gina later on. Um, with the certificate program, really, I it really prepares you for being able then to dive in into your uh, job if you want to get a promotion, if you want to sit for a certification exam, and you get a well-rounded education overall. Uh, was there anything, Gina, in particular, you wanted to mention about our offerings? Okay. Oh, nothing, nothing in particular. Sorry, I couldn't get okay. the unmute to work, but, um, no, but they're no. online. Um, I think maybe the hours, something we want to mention that the, okay. um, the Zoom meetings happen after work hours. So if you're working during the day, it's that perfect type of course to kind of pace yourself where there's just evening Zoom meetings where you would be interacting with your teacher and students. So that's yeah. the only other thing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, sure. And, and I think you can finish it in as little as six months. I mean, it's a very flexible program. Um, and the other great thing too is uh, we as instructors, we are, we can provide you with a wealth of knowledge from our own experiences along with networking. Um, so really take advantage of that. Okay, thank you. Uh, next slide. Okay, so I think with that, um, what I'd like to do now is I'd like to uh, get our, our panelists um, talking because they're, they should be the stars of the show because they've done so well. Um, and I've really had the privilege of uh, really getting to know uh, students and, and them in particular, and I'm so proud of their accomplishments. So what I'll do is I'll ask, um, I'll start with a couple of questions and really, you know, Susan, Jimmy, Raymond, just jump in uh, whenever you'd like. So the first question I have is, um, how did you find your current job? Yeah. Go ahead, Susan. Um, actually, as um, I retired from nursing, um, I needed something completely different. And I started as a temp employee for Epic. And my manager, um, I was hired as a contracts administrative assistant. And I knew nothing about contracts. Um, my manager served as really a friend and a mentor. And she had completed the program through UCI and she guided me through the process and I assumed her position as she promoted to our FNP, FPNA um, manager and I just kind of followed in her footsteps and her we developed a career pathway for me and this was a key um, key component of it as well as my um, promotion that is currently in the process of being promoted to first manager. Did you guys hear that? she got she was promoted early that i mean i mean not only does that tell you the caliber of our students but um th i think that also speaks to the fact of how how vital contract management is as a skill set that's it thank you um raymond jimmy would you mind just uh sharing how did you find your current position sure um i was after i Graduating um, from my grad program, I moved to the Bay Area and was looking for work. I had a friend who was already working at the company at the time for a different city and referred me, thought yeah, I'd be a good fit. So I started off in pricing, but after about six months, I felt somewhat bored of the job. It was too routine and worked regularly with contract managers where every day they seemed to be problem solving. There were new fires to put out. Um, they're working with customers, working with different functionals. So it was very exciting. Every day seemed different. And I thought, I want that. So it wasn't know exactly how to position myself into a new contract role. Um, our company offered a, an education assistance program. And through that, I saw that UCI uh, was, uh, UCI had the contract management certificate program. 
So I applied for, uh, I think, two courses. And then when a position opened up, I applied, highlighted that I'm taking these courses, um, that this is something that I am interested in, and I'm putting already um, time into learning um, how to be a contract rep. And I think you know they were impressed by that. And then ended up in contract. And then within about two to three years, I uh, eventually got promoted to uh, the contract manager position that I'm in today. Wow. That's another great, uh, just how people ascend. That's that's fantastic. Uh, Raymond, would you like to share? Yeah, yeah. So in terms of how I found my current position, I was actually really fortunate in that uh, a recruiter had reached out to me on, on LinkedIn uh, about this new opportunity, a company in San Francisco, they're growing and, you know, they're doing a tons of contracts. And it's interesting because my career path is a little bit different from a lot of, I'm not a contracts manager, but I do work with contracts manager on a daily basis. So we have to like triage high volume commercial requests um, and various types of contracts. So I think having the contract management uh, classes really gave me kind of an understanding and you know empathy and being able to work with kind of what not only our contract managers are dealing with, but kind of what the business wants in kind of entering into these contracts. So having that kind of understanding has been really helpful from a, a toolbox perspective. Right. Those are um, really good points, Raymond. And I would also say too, in a lot of these um, industries, so when we were talking about like, for instance, um, life sciences or emerging areas like marketing or esports, um, they yet, they, they realize that they have a, a dire need for a contract management professional, but they don't know really how to define the role yet. Contract management really kind of grew its way up um, through aerospace and defense. And so the, the roles in aerospace in kind of the traditional aerospace and defense are much more defined than in more of these uh, newer industries, if you will. But so what you'll see is like, as Raymond was mentioning, you'll have like recruiters and they will reach out looking for the skill sets. So like um, contract drafting, contract uh, life cycle, those types of issues. And even though it may be for like an esports company, once they see that you have those skill sets that they need, you, you'll have a position that is waiting for you. And now the, the title may be a little different. Uh, I've, it kind of runs the gamut. They'll may have contract manager, uh, I've seen contract life cycle specialist. I've seen um, contracting professional. I've seen contract administrator. I've seen contract compliance manager. So the titles run the gamut, but what is unifying throughout is the recognition of the need that they need contracting professionals hired. The other thing I will say too is, um, so about six months ago, the US Department of Justice uh, came out with new guidance on um, antitrust violations and why that's very important and why I keep harping on that point is so the DOJ, right, they're the attorneys that um, essentially will prosecute cases either civilly or criminally against any organization. So it's not just a particular, you know, publicly traded S&P 500 company, it could be any organization. So it's very important to to keep abreast of what the DOJ does. Now, what they were saying is with looking at new antitrust violations and why that ties directly to what contract managers do is if there are going to be joint ventures or other issues where potentially antitrust laws could be violated, the first person, the first professional in the organization who could see whether or not an antitrust violation could occur in a particular company would be the contracts professional. They could look at the joint venture, they could look at other teaming agreements and kind of figure out, oh, this could potentially be an antitrust issue. I better bring it up to legal, right? And that's what happened at um, one of my client companies. So I, I, can, I can attest to the fact, having worked with contract managers who are worth their weight in gold, how they protect the company and why they're so sought after. But again, um, you, you can have different uh, titles. The other kind of common theme I wanna highlight, and then I'll let the other panelists um, speak for the other questions, is did you notice how each of, I mean, first of all, these three panelists, they're brilliant, they're, they're phenomenal, but 
moreover, you know, they got promoted and the organization found positions for them within the company because the skill set that they have is so vital. So I want you to, to keep that in mind um, as well. All right, the next question that I have, and again, anybody can jump in first. Uh, what is a typical day like for you? I'll, I'll, I'll jump in first. So for, for me, it's really wide ranging. So, uh, you know, it, I work in kind of the legal department, sp specifically in the legal operations team. So a lot of it is kind of triaging contract requests that come in to the in, into the legal team. And so uh, there is a lot. And let me tell you, there's, you know, there's various types of contracts, there's NDAs, SOWs, uh, customer contracts, vendor contracts, you name it. It's very, very high volume. So I think each day, you know, it, it, it's a different day for me. Uh, but it, 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 I think it keeps things exciting, exciting for me, right? So like, it, and it doesn't work for everyone, right? So some people prefer structure, right? And you'd like to know what's kind of, kind of coming across the corner. Uh, in, in the position I am, you know, a typical day is it's it, it changes. It's very hard to predict what's going to be just because the business is growing. They're entering into a lot of contracts. They're renewing a lot of contracts. They're terminating a lot of contracts and working with our kind of contract managers and commercial counsel on, on, on those deals. It's, it's, it's a very exciting thing for me. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Jimmy or Susan, what's a typical day like for you? Sure. Uh, yeah, it's always different. Um, I guess the only constant is that I'll be in meetings back to back to about noon. Uh, since I'm the contract manager, you're plugged into all kinds of different meetings. So it could be engineers talking to maybe even customer engineers that are talking about some, um, some issue that they're facing, they want contract manager presence so that we can identify any potential constructive changes that might be happening and then follow those through after the meeting. I'm sitting in on business management me meetings where they're talking about funding schedules, you know, cash payments, invoices that need to be collected so that those requests can come to me to then work with the customers to make sure that we're collecting cash on time. Sitting in on proposal meetings, trying to figure out the um, negotiation strategy that's gonna be coming up for some major proposal effort. So the, the only constant is that there's a lot of meetings, um, but it also follows the, the contract life cycle. So uh, on certain periods of weeks and months, it'll be primarily proposal and negotiation focused. And then once we are in the execution phase, it'll be just months trying to figure out how to um, make sure the contract is being executed properly and baseline properly. And then when it's during closeout, you're in all kinds of closeout meetings, um, trying to make sure that we're closing out the contracts in a compliant manner. Um, so that we don't end up with any uh, withholds from the government in the future for having 20 years worth of contracts that we've never properly closed out. So uh, um, every day is changing. Okay, that's great. Uh, Susan. I also get to enjoy many meetings on a daily basis as I've moved um, up in the management chain. Um, however, I start out my mornings most days and I review the work that our India team has done overnight because they are 12 and a half hours ahead of us. Mm -hmm. um, so the contract analysts that handle our cyber contracts I and our legal services contracts, I review their work, make sure it is accurate. Um, and then I am in charge currently and have been for the last several years of all of our class action antitrust contracts. Um, and we do a lot of work with the DOJ, the SEC, as well as very large financial institutions that have a lot of service level agreements and offshore restrictions and non-standard document retention. So all the contracts that come across my desk, I have to carefully scrutinize those. And if there are any restrictions that say um, we can't do any work outside of the US borders or territories, I need to alert um, our leadership teams and um, I also alert project management teams if there's like issues about um, non-standard document retention for when they close out a case, mm -hmm. sure compliance on that. And I maintain all these different spreadsheets and reports. At the end of the month, I like today, I just um, sent out all these reports where I screen all those things every month. I also work very closely with our sales team. There are the people that are out um, working with clients, storming up business when there are new large class action lawsuits, doing the RFPs, 
and then they'll send me their estimates with requests for contracts and I prepare those to, for them. And as um, a lot of different work as the day goes on, but each day is basically the same. So. Thank you, thank yeah. you. And then um, kind of to follow up on, on that question, um, if you could just kind of expand on uh, what do you like most about your job? And then what are some things that mm, maybe you don't like so much? I'll go. Sure. Um, my job was identified back in 2017 as a job that was great for remote work because our company was expanding so quickly that we outgrew our office space. And so I've been working from home since 2016. And as a single mom, I get to have a really well-paid job and get to be home with my kids. And the flexibility is great. Our company has evolved to about 99% of our workforce is now remote, mm -hmm. except for the people that physically have to be there for job responsibilities. Um, so that is good. The other thing that um, goes along with it that I don't enjoy so much is all of the screen time meetings. You get Zoom fatigue or we use <laughs> Teams. So I get Teams fatigue. And when you're trying to train a new employee or learn something new yourself, screen sharing and trying to learn new things that way or teach things like that is really challenging for me. Right. Those are, those are all great points. And especially now with COVID, those are all very relevant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, like I'm right now training people in India and receiving training from people over there and the, um, the time difference and trying to like learn verse, um, oh, through screen sharing. It's just, it's challenging, but we get through it. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Jimmy or, or Raymond? Uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, I'll start with the, the, the negative. Um, I think it depends on the programs that I'm working with, um, many of them do see contracts as an essential part of um, the business and the, just the program team. But there are certain programs, typically with uh, program managers who've been with the company for a long time, so I think there is a generational thing, where they see contracts as a blocker. So they uh, try not to bring us into certain meetings have tried to have conversations with the customers on the side uh, on the side and make decisions that may impact the company, um, may not be fully compliant, or we should have sent you know, some notifications or reservation of flights, things like that. But because they see us as um, preventing them doing the work that they like doing, they don't always involve us. And so there's a little bit of that internal conflict. Um, the other challenge is just challenging customers. You have a wide gamut of customers that are really collaborative and then customers where, um, their, just their, I guess their personality is, um, oh, if even the company, you can sense that certain companies have certain personalities. So those reps uh, might be very challenging where everything is confrontational. Um, and so th those are things that you got to manage. Um, and then the other kind of challenges are contracts are long. So five, seven year contracts. And because of that, you've had many different people involved in throughout the process. And so we might not get the full history of what's happened, what's been agreed to, what's been negotiated. And back then, it was all paper uh, contracts that's been scanned into electronics. So trying to do the, um, the analysis and the research, trying to go back five, seven years, you can't do simple PDF searches. You got to physically pull up the files and just read through. Like, those are challenges. What's great, um, Su Echo Susan, um, all of us have um, moved remote. So I'd say about um, more than half of my team is remote outside, outside of uh, California. Um, what's, what's great for me is that if I ever decide to move elsewhere, so my wife is currently looking for work uh, and I'm telling her you can look anywhere in the continental United States because I know I'll be able to work remotely or be able to find the job easily in those areas who are also hiring remote. So there's just a lot of opportunities out there. Great, thank you. And Raymond? Yeah, so I, I think, Jimmy, you brought up a really interesting point. And it's something I've also seen at the company I work for in terms of like a blocker issue where like the business might not might not be willing to engage because you think, you know, they think that, you know, slow down the transaction and whatnot. And it's definitely a challenge, I think, being able to balance kind of on the one hand what the business wants to do and what they want to get done with kind of, you know, legal compliance and kind of the risk risk issues. And so for me, that's also kind of kind of a, uh, 
a negative, I would say, because sometimes the business is going very fast, but we have to, you know, try to, we also have to review contracts as well. So being able to kind of balance that is, is, is challenging at time. And I wish there was more time to, you know, take a step back and then, you know, really ask questions and, and, and get a better understanding of kind of uh, why we're doing the kind of the deals that we're, that we're doing. Uh, but in terms of kind of uh, what I, I like most, it's really, I would say kind of the, the breadth of topics that we're exposed to as, as a growing company, right? You, we're not just growing domestically, but also internationally as well. And, uh, you know, different countries have different laws, right? So like in the US, you know, with different state laws, but then, you know, laws in, you know, the Netherlands or in England, they're, they're not the same, right? And so for me, it's just being able to kind of learn not only what's happening in the, in the US, but also abroad has, has been very, has been very, uh, you know, enlightening to me. All, all great points. And I do kind of have a question to kind of piggyback off of the really good points everybody brought up. So in contract management, if uh, like in the Simbok, it explains all of the stakeholders that the contract manager has to work with. They have to work with legal, they have to work with the program manager, they have to work with finance. And at the end of the day, because contract management, you have to have so many different skill sets as a contracts manager. So it's not just the legal, it's not just the compliance, but it's also having the business skill set, the business acumen. So um, would any of you like to discuss a little bit more about how well-rounded you have to be as a contracts manager? Um, I'll chime in on that. I work very closely with sales and initially they did definitely see me as um, a roadblock because they would go and get a red line contract that didn't go through any approvals and have the client sign it and present it to us like, oh, now we're starting this huge contract and it hasn't gone through legal or anything. Um, and that occurred quite a lot before I started. And along with my then manager, we revamped the process of having um, an approval chain and actually doing things in the right process. And I've heard a lot of feedback from um, these salesmen and women that Initially, I struggled quite a bit with um, that I'm the best contract manager they've worked with and the process has gotten so much easier and like everybody's happier now, even though we're being more compliant and the company is more protected, but they're also getting their contract signed and their commissions and keeping their customers happy. So um, initially it was a challenge, but I think um, having that business acumen, like you mentioned, and also just the people skills and working as a liaison between the salespeople and our legal department and finance to ensure that we're compliant, but keep things moving. So we don't slow down. Right. Great example. So uh, I, in grad school, I took a bunch of financial modeling classes and that's been super helpful in my role as a contract manager because we'll get some sort of, uh, maybe the contract has some incentive plan where based on certain actions that we, certain milestones that we complete were guaranteed certain incentives or based on the cost overrun that decreases our profit by X percentage. So it helped modeling that out and validating with our business management team, whether this made sense, whether this protects the business or if there's any changes that we wanna make, um, make to the plan so that the company breaks even at the kind of the, the high confidence, low risk scenario so doing that sort of modeling has been super helpful. Um, our company provides a lot of training. Um, so even as a contract professional, we have access to all of the trainings that our business management and financial analysts have. We have access to all of the training that our supply chain folks have. So we're, we're encouraged to take those classes and learn. Um, we also offer um, cross uh, stretch assignment. So if we have a, a contract manager, a contract professional who's interested in being a financial analyst, uh, we work with the business management team to see if they can have a stretch assignment for six months to a year. So then, then the thought is at the end of that period, they'll come back and be just a stronger contract professional for it. Um, so having those skill sets is I think essentially really important. And then looking at kind of our, our organizational structure, um, you see a trend where many of the people who have been promoted or who have been really successful in their roles have those cross-functional skills. So if you're not yet a contract professional, um, but once you jump into that, I think you're really um, set up in a great way because you have all of this other experience. And by taking this class, you're gonna have 
Uh, this is a trigger course. You're going to have the contract management experience with that. That just makes you a stronger um, um, employee in the equity company. Great. Thank you. Yeah, I, I would say, you know, it's incredibly important to have business acumen. And that's why I was so thankful in the contract management program that one of the classes was the financial aspects of, of business of business contracts, right? They say that, you know, the language of business is finance, right? And so being able to understand, you know, the balance sheet, the income statement, the statement of cash flow and how that relates to the business, that would help you a lot in communicating, give, gives you additional kind of avenues to engage with the various business stakeholders right because um that's at the end of the day you know that that's what the, the business cares most about right and that's kind of generating revenue and profit and things like that and having kind of that shared language i definitely think helps engage helps you be able to engage uh with with the business great and um that's that's a great segue as well so kind of my final question before we get to audience questions um what from uci's program like classes or um you know aspects from the simbok uh were really helpful to you um in in your careers i have the simbok right next to me so i, I Larry. I reference it all the time and we have some new hires. So I leave it on their desk so that they can flip through it. Uh, the contract life cycle and seeing where um, kind of what the standard is for how a negotiation team should be formed. That's helpful. Uh, going through some negotiation process right now. So they, they, I forgot the class name, but it was a negotiating course. And there was a book about different profiles, kind of negotiation styles. Uh, so that was very helpful in trying to help me frame, okay, what kind of uh, negotiator is this person and how am I going to respond? Um, so th that's been really helpful um, currently. Yeah. I really enjoy learning more about FAR. Yeah. We do work so much with government agencies and a lot of the, most of the work that we do with them is on fair paper. And it really helped me understand the, the reasoning and the language of the, um, the terms and conditions for our government contracts. I also enjoyed as well um, the negotiation class. That was really interesting. And also like, I think it was our, the first course I took was just learning about the different types of contracts and how they leverage the risk between um, the client and the, con the contracting company. <clears throat> the, the word is slipping my mind right now, but that was really interesting to me to see like, okay, well, this is why we use this contract over this contract in certain situations, right? That was actually a question during my interview for my job where they talked about the contract types and the risk to the buyer and the oh, seller. And so I was able to kind of regurgitate that right back at them. And so that okay. was very helpful. Awesome. awesome. <laughs> So I, I would say uh, for me, definitely the financial aspects yeah. course was, was my favorite, but another one was kind of the ethics course yeah. as well, just because contracts generally affect multiple stakeholders right. and being able to balance the interests of those kind of stakeholders, whether that be kind of the suppliers or, or the customers, or if you're doing business with the government, you know, state, local education, select public sector. I mean, there's just there's a ton. So being able to kind of understand that, um, I, I thought was something I didn't know before going into the program, and that helped a lot in providing some context and some perspective as well. Great, thank you. Well, I think we have um, a few more minutes. Of if there are any questions from the audience or Gina, if you got any questions from attendees. It looks like the attendees are still absorbing a lot of the information that um, has been presented so far, but I kind of had an, another question, um, maybe from the perspective of a new student. Um, if if you were brand new to the program now, having done a lot you have, what advice would you give yourself going into the program? I mean, would you have um, done something different or, or just, um, I guess, no, knowing what online courses are like and your experience, um, just what, what advice would you give to a new student, I guess? I would say that the ethics course was um, probably the best class to pair with another one to take simultaneously. 
I believe I finished the program in a year and or just under a year. And as a single mom with, you know, four kids at home and working full time, I was definitely able to do that in the weekends. Um, I'm sorry, week, weekday evenings and the weekends. It was very manageable while also being like really informative and good material. So I felt like it was very doable. I did um, two classes per term and it was a good balance for work life school. That's perfect. Do, do, uh, Jimmy or Raymond have any advice for, for new students? Uh, I think there's a I think an electronic version of the Simbok out there that was very helpful in um, searching the topic that I need to. Um, the book is also helpful to have on the desk, but the, the EPUB version is also very helpful. Uh, taking two courses, uh, yeah, it's also the workload, very manageable. I was able to have a full time job and have a life and also take the classes. So uh, yeah, take it at your own pace. Uh, Yeah, I, I would also say I think the course course load is generally very very manageable, but it's also kind of what you put in is what you get out of it. And so, like, I wish if I were to do more, uh, if I were to do it again, um, I would be more curious during the classes. Like, I would ask more questions, and um, because like is it, it's a very broad topic. You, you can never you know truly un understand everything, and so just being able to have that curiosity to kind of learn new things. I think that would have been more help. I think for me, I, I, I wish I had asked more questions and instead of being uh, kind of more of a passive student for me. Thanks. I can I second that because we, there were a lot of discussion board questions and your, your cohorts come from such a broad range of industries and experience. And I think I sometimes I just did the minimum of answering the discussion board questions and responding as required but going back, like looking back I wish I had like been more inquisitive and curious with my cohorts because I think that's a really good way to learn about the industry and the job and what there is out there and it just gives you a better perspective and if I could also like kind of piggyback on the great points brought up too uh, I, I highly encourage uh, students email me, contact me, let's schedule a time to, to, to talk. Um, because all, all of the instructors uh, and, and the people at UCI, they just are a wealth of knowledge and they can provide you with uh, different perspectives. Uh, if, if you're looking for a position for a particular industry, you know, they can, they can give you more context. So really, really take advantage of that. Um, we're, we're, we're here to, to, to be a, a resource for you. Well, thank you so much, Virginia. Thank you for the panelists. I think um, I gave a few more minutes for the questions. It doesn't look like we've got anything new we show pop up right now, but we appreciate your time and all of the wonderful information you've shared with us today. Um, I think uh, just this perspective has been will be so valuable to our students, and we'll also be sharing this with pr prospective students who registered and may not have made it. They'll be able to see a recording of this as well. So thank you again so much. Um, it was a very informative, very interesting um, kind of chat that we had and just hearing your answers to these questions was so great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank, Thank you. you. Have Bye. a great one. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.